Emergency Auto Land activated. The Emergency Auto Land system is controlling the aircraft and will land at the safest nearby airport. And that's what it may sound like someday if you activate Garmin's new Auto Land feature. Hello again and welcome to this bonus episode of the Aviation News Talk podcast, a weekly show with relevant news and flying tips for pilots and student pilots to help keep you safe. I'm Max Truscott. And this is a special episode, so you'll be one of the first people to know that Carbon rocked the world early Wednesday morning with their announcement of a new Autoland feature, which will be available initially in two aircraft, the Piper M600 turboprop and the Cirrus SF50 Vision Jet. And I am thrilled to be here in Olathe, Kansas at the Garmin headquarters for this unprecedented announcement. Now, Garmin shared the details of this announcement with me late yesterday, which gave me just enough time to produce this episode. Over the next two days, I'll be interviewing people at Garmin about this and other things that they're working on, and I'll bring you more details about all of these things in the coming months. Then after these two days here at Garmin, I'm flying to Duluth, Minnesota, to pick up a new Cirrus Vision Jet to bring it back to California for the owner. And no, unfortunately, it won't have the new Autoland feature in it. But while I'm there, I do hope to be interviewing people at Cirrus about how they'll be implementing this feature in the Vision Jet, and I'll bring you those interviews in a future episode. Now let's look at what Garmin has said about Autoland. First, it will only be available in the Garmin G3000, and initially it will be launched just in the Piper M600, which we talked about in episode 126, and in the Cirrus Vision Jet. But it may be a few months before we see these aircraft delivered with this capability as neither Cirrus nor Piper has yet gotten the Autoland feature certified by the FAA for their aircraft. In a few minutes, I'll tell you what other aircraft use the G3000 and hence may get the Autoland feature at some future date. Now from the press release, it appears Garmin is positioning Autoland as an emergency feature and not necessarily something that you would use routinely for every landing. And that's a good thing, as I think pilot landing skills would degrade if we could use Autoland for every landing we make. Now, to activate the Autoland system, you need to just push one dedicated button, which means it will be simple enough to use that any trained passenger should be activate the system. And that should make Autoland extremely useful if a pilot becomes incapacitated, which adds a whole new level of safety to flying. According to Garmin, the Autoland system, which they cleverly call Autonomy, which is spelled like the word autonomy, but with an I instead of a Y at the end, Autonomy takes into consideration a lot of factors before selecting the airport and runway at which it will land. These factors include weather, fuel on board, runway surface and length, terrain, obstacles, and more. So it's great to see that Autonomy won't fly you through a mountain, which is something that could happen with some of the automated vertical navigation features available in aircraft systems today. Plus, Garmin says that Autoland can also activate itself automatically if the system determines that's necessary. Now, how that might work in different aircraft manufacturers' implementation of the G3000 could vary, but some G3000-equipped aircraft like the SF-50 Vision Jet already have a hypoxia recognition capability that's associated with their EDM or emergency descent mode. And that's apparently what will trigger an automatically activated Autoland, at least in the Cirrus Vision Jet, and probably in the Piper M600 as well. EDM is triggered if a pilot has had no interaction with the avionics in the aircraft for a predetermined length of time. And when that time criteria is met, an Are You Alert system message is displayed. Touching a soft key or button resets the system. If the alert is not acknowledged within 60 seconds, a hypoxia alert message is displayed. And if that alert is not acknowledged within 60 seconds, an auto descent warning is displayed. An automatic descent to 14,000 feet in 60 seconds is displayed. And if no interaction occurs, the autopilot initiates a descent to 14,000 feet. If no pilot interaction occurs after 4 minutes at 14,000 feet, the system descends to 12,500 feet. And apparently Autoland will now continue that descent all the way to the ground. In addition to landing the plane, autonomy will also automatically communicate with air traffic control. Now, it's not clear from the press release if that simply means the aircraft will squawk 7700 or if it will transmit automated messages to ATC. It does say that passengers have the option to communicate with ATC by following instructions displayed on one of the aircraft's touchscreen controllers. So this is one of the things I'll try and get more detail about when I talk with people at Garmin. Throughout the landing, the G3000 displays a map showing the aircraft's position and information about the destination airport that it's chosen, the estimated time of arrival, distance to the destination airport, and the remaining fuel on board. And throughout the entire emergency landing, Autonomy will continuously provide visual and oral messages in plain language so that passengers can see and hear what to expect 
as the automated landing occurs. Now, a key component of the system is the Garmin Auto Throttle, and that manages engine power to control speed, as well as to climb, descend, and maintain altitude as needed during an auto landing. The auto land system can also initiate a holding pattern if needed to lose altitude or reduce speed. It will also automatically extend flaps and the landing gear as needed. Now, once on the runway, the brakes are automatically applied to slow the aircraft and track the runway center line until the aircraft is brought to a full stop on the runway. The engine is then shut down automatically so that people can safely exit the aircraft. And at any time, the Autoland system can be deactivated by pressing the AP key on the autopilot controller or the autopilot disconnect button on the yoke or side stick. And if the system was accidentally deactivated, the flight display shows passengers how to reactivate Autoland if necessary. Now, autonomy differs in one major way from Autoland systems that you'll find in airliners such as the Boeing 787, 777, 757, and 767. Those airliners can only execute an auto landing at an airport with an ILS, and there are only about 600 ILS systems in the U.S. However, autonomy works with GPS and can land at many of the thousands of airports with a GPS approach as long as it has vertical guidance to the runway, such as approaches with LPV minimums. And there are now more than 3,000 LPV approaches in the U.S., so there are thousands of airports to which autonomy can make an automatic landing. By the way, if you're wondering what aircraft other than the Vision Jet and the M600 use the Garmin 3000, and hence what other aircraft might eventually get this Autoland capability, I put together a list of all the planes I could find that currently ship with the G3000. And they include the Cessna M2 and CJ3+, the Dyer, or if you prefer Daher, TBM 930 and the new TBM 940, the Phenom EV100, which is the new version of the Phenom 100, and the Phenom 300E. Also, the Honda Jet. Now, in the future, Cessna's new single-engine turboprop, the Denali, will also use the G3000. And there are a couple of tactical aircraft slated to use a smaller version of the G3000. And these include Textron's Airland Scorpion and the Diamond Dart 550. TAC Air has also retrofitted the G3000 into its small fleet of refurbished F-5 fighter jets. Now, note that only a few models of the G3000-equipped aircraft currently have an auto throttle, and to me that looks like a key portion of the Autoland system. In addition to the Cirrus Vision Jet and the Piper M600, Daher announced about a month ago that the new TBM 940 also has an auto throttle, so it's a good guess that the 940 may be the next aircraft to get this new Autoland feature. So there you have it, the new Autonomy Autoland feature for the Garmin G3000. And as I always wind up these podcasts, I just want to let you know, if you ever think you might want to buy a Cirrus, just give me a call and let me know. Or if you like flight training in one, call me up. You can reach me at 650-967-2500 for a free consultation and possibly a free demo flight. And I can also explain the differences between buying a late model used aircraft and a new model. And if you'd like to send an email with feedback or record a listener question, just go to aviationnewstalk.com and click on contact or click on listener question at the top of the page. And of course, please tell your friends about the show. And if they don't know what a podcast is, we'll just send them to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store to download our dedicated Aviation News Talk podcast apps for iOS and Android. And yeah, those apps are free. So until next time, fly safely, have fun, and keep the blue side up. 